Well, good morning guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode on the $100 Disco. So today we are doing a bit more cage work. Um, as you saw in the last episode, we uh, mocked up the uh, new coilovers, which was very exciting. Um, we just made these little mounts up so that we could find out how high we needed to situate the coilovers. And we got lucky, these uh, bars here happen to be the same height as this. So we can start our cage work. Uh, all the cage work is going to be working from here down and round today. Um, basically just uh, starting tying the whole end back together uh, really excited to uh, crack into it see it coming together we picked up some material so uh, le yeah let's crack into it well I saved your expensive bracket but Well, we haven't filmed too much this morning. Um, we've just been uh, redoing these tubes here. You might remember we made this in the last video as a mock-up. However, it's got a chop in the middle of it and it's made out of seam tubes, so no good for uh, actual coilover mounts. Uh, so we have gone and made these. Um, just whipped these up. I mean, whipped up. Took about an hour and a half. But uh, anyway, we've got these nice tubes. So uh, one goes there and one goes there. And then we're going to run the bars from down there and same on there. So uh, that's what we're going to crack into uh, after lunch. Okay guys, so we've got the uh, bend marked out. Uh, it's only one bend, so it's not particularly difficult. And then we've uh, used the little angle gauge we've got, um, roughed out where we think the bend needs to, uh, how many you know, how many degrees we need to go to. Um, so we'll bend to that, and then we'll go test fit and keep going. Um, basically, keep testing until we get the angle correctly. Um, not a super scientific way of doing it, but that's how we'll do it. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is actually pipe we're using. Um, like actual DOM tubing and like the sort of stuff that you see overseas is very hard to get in New Zealand or basically impossible so so yeah we just use a seamless gas pipe um, if you're doing stuff like this make sure it's seamless for you know all the structural stuff um, some of the cage well not the cage but some of the little extra bits is uh, um, welded pipe um, so seamed but this stuff is all seamless a little bit expensive but uh, it's strong you know mounting coilovers you want the best sort of stuff you can get and because it's pipe, uh, you can get away with using a pipe bender rather than a fancy tube bender, which kind of draws it through a mandrel. Um, so this pipe bender is from Topmac. Um, this one is really good. I'll leave a link in the description below, but it's got really nice deep, um, nice deep former. Um, basically, the walls are nice and high on it. You want one with high walls. It stops the um, basically the shape of the tube or pipe, I should say. Um, from deforming as it gets um, bent otherwise like the cheap ones they've got really shallow walls you'll find that it'll just kink the pipe and won't do as nice a job there's ways around it but uh, it's worth spending the extra to get you know a nice uh, bender or at least nice formers for your bender so yeah I'll leave a link in the description for that below Alrighty guys, well we've decided that we ever so slightly overbent this uh, this pipe. Unfortunately, it is not savable if we're trying to do it perfectly, which we are. So it is what it is. So uh, unfortunately, we'll just have to cut another section and do it again. really 
pleased with how we've uh, got it looking. So what you can see here, we've uh, because of the fact that the tube's sitting up high uh, down there, um, we've put another tube in there and another tube in down here, basically to simulate it all sitting at the same on the same plane. So the uh, point of that is so that we can get the notches even. So because otherwise um, it's hard to explain, but otherwise. Um, as this rotates down more, um, the notch down there changes. So as you can see, we've got it pretty good. Um, we can do the final tweaks on that shortly, but what we'll crack onto next is the uh, chopping it and notching it up there to suit. And then we can uh, take out those spaces, drop it down and see how it looks. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how that looks. Um, yeah, it just looks so cool. So, so cool. Super aggressive rear end, so it's going to make for one cool truck. So we're finished uh, notching for the time being. Um, as you can see, there's some excess here, but don't worry about that. That'll be all sorted, but... Uh, it's all notched and fitting quite well up there, except for the fact that, as you can see, those tubes don't line up, which means we have to close up this angle ever so slightly. Yeah, good. That's 120. All right, I'm gonna let the tension off. Yeah. You're gonna need to measure it again. We good. That was really concerning. Okay, nervous but happy with that. Woo. That was not enjoyable. Well, it's the next morning um, and time to tackle doing the other side. Um, so obviously we've got the driver's side bar to get completed. But before that, we just want to uh, tweak this upright. Um, basically this bar's sitting slightly up at that end so we'll get it all level um, by uh, trimming a little bit out of that notch and then um, yeah tackle that side spoiler alert I'm not left-handed So we are getting ready to do the next bend um, and I thought I'd just give you guys a couple of wee pointers on how to get reasonable results out of a relatively affordable bender. So first things first, make yourself one of these, just an angle finder, um, literally a couple pieces of flat bar and a bolt, easy as. But yeah, set your angle for what you want to bend to and you put it over top and then don't bend too far basically. Um, work your way up. And what we'll show you is that as we go, uh, we use a measuring tape off the um, face of the um, of the ram, and then we measure to under here to where the edge of the former is. Basically, that way, because you have to allow for spring back, um, that way you can go back to the same point you were at previously um, to then me to then keep bending from there. Um, otherwise, it makes it very hard guessing how much spring back you have to account for. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, we'll show you as we go. So we'll just slip the tape measure in here now that we know we're getting close. And we're me we're going to 118. We know that from uh, we know that from the other side bend we've done, but usually what we'd do is be using the angle finder, um, matching the angle, um, and then you measure it. So we'd be currently at what? Uh, currently at 
say 202. Um, so what we'd do from there, release it, go test fit it, and then when we when we come back, um, you'll see the pipe will have sprung back a lot. Um, so we can go back to 202 and know that you know we're now at the same point um, that we were at, and then we can can continue from there adding more bends. So um, that's the point of using the tape measure. So yeah, we're going to continue. We're going to go to 218. So we'll keep going there and then uh, go test fit it. Yep. And then, so you can, you guys can see the spring back. Just release it quick, Matt, so they can see it. So, hopefully the video caught that. But uh, yeah, as you release the uh, tension, there's a lot of spring back. So that's why measuring is so important. Um, it means you can get back to the point point you're at before, so you can, uh, you know, replicate it and not accidentally, you know make no difference or uh, more importantly go too far all right guys well notch is done at the far end or done for the time being um what we thought might happen has happened we've realized that we need the tiniest bit more uh, bend t just slightly tighter angle you can see these two tubes here lined up perfectly but these two uh, it's, this one's just kicking out a, f a fraction so now for the nerve-wracking bit of trying to add just enough bend and this is where it really pays to have uh, measured your previous bend so we're at 218 we'll take it up to 219 fingers crossed that's enough and uh, yeah fingers crossed it's not too much it should also be noted that as we said earlier, we have done this deliberately. Um, we took the last one to 221, 222. Um, so we deliberately stopped at 218 um, because it's a lot easier to put more bend in than it is to take bend out. Well, we didn't film it. Probably should have, but we didn't. But uh, we got absolute money. So just lines up beautifully the whole way through. Much relief. Anyway, I'm going to continue notching. Get this uh, looking a bit better and then we'll uh, throw the other side on and zap it all together. <laughs> Alright guys, well fingers crossed that's the last one. Guys, I am so good at this. Safe to say, we're beyond stoked with the uh, fit up of that. It's come up looking real clean, really clean. Um, not bad for all done on a uh, pipe bender and uh, all hand notching. Um, yeah, gotta say, oh and especially working from a canvas that's uh, a little bit messed up from when we did all the base stuff last year. Anyway, it's come up looking real good, I'm beyond stoked. Next thing we'll do is uh, whip off all the uh, scale and the rust, um, and then we'll probably throw a few tacks on it, and yeah, admire it some more. Alright, with uh, those two bars all sat in there nicely, the current plan is to just throw a quick couple of tacks on them, uh, just to hold them in place while we uh, then go attaching coilover brackets and stuff like that. Um, when it comes time to weld it out properly and do all of the final welding on it, we'll probably just drop the rear axle, uh, just to give Tim room to do it, and potentially to put a new axle in it. But uh, yeah, for now, just a quick couple of tacks, and uh, hopefully some coilovers.
Right guys, well there we are, that is it for another video. Super stoked with how the uh, rear cage has come out. Um, it just looks so cool, such a different design to pretty much anything else I've seen and yeah, just looks sharp as. And uh, I reckon it should work pretty well too. Awesome to see the coilovers thrown in there as well. Um, for those of you who don't remember, uh, they're ramped customs mounts and uh, 14 inch Pro Fender shocks or coilovers. So um, definitely, uh, definitely all the goods. Anyway, um, make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already to stay tuned for the build on this, finishing it up along with uh, everything else we get up to. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, leave a comment down below of what you thought of it, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you for watching, I'll see you then.